Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in A Philosophy of Religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman. We've concluded uh, the first 93 pages, and Brightman tells us that concludes his phenomenology of religion. So we're going to look at a composite of that phenomenology now to get a good recap of his entire phenomenology of religion. If you look at the chart, basically the left of the chart is the subjective and the speculative. The right side of the chart is the objective and the real. The lower is the uh, level of observation. And the upper is the level of acquiring the true. So you've got left, right, bottom, top, left, subjective, right, objective, bottom, observation, top, notion of the true. So it's kind of laid out that way. We've, we've looked at phenomenology before with the same type of chart, but that just gives you a refresher orientation of how the thing is organized. So we begin at the bottom. We're going to take a look at uh, block one at our phenomenological starting point. Bretman told us methodology must be empirical. The aim is to construct a unity of experience, but we'll have a non-scientific interest addressing consciousness, feelings, and belief. Two, there is a step of negation. We negate a priori truth, but define, define presuppositions. We negate uh, verification by sense experience only, but we do ask for the meaning of verification. We do negate the Bardian position and the notion that experience cannot be trusted, but we do examine the claims of revelation. And then block three, we get to that axiom of investigation must include development from the primitive to the mature, and national religion is a particularism of value, creating a religion that exclusively folds in on itself, where prophetic religion posits a universalism of value, creating a religion that inclusively moves out of itself toward an atmosphere of discussion and elevating the thought of the individual. And that allows us to transition upward to block four and what uh, Aristotle called the Dekunta threshold. But it's basically that place where uh, Dokeo suppositions of an exclusive national religion are tested through dialogue. The prophetic word empowers this process in order to reach a higher notion of the true that is ethical, individual affirming, and universal in nature. Dialogue seeks to create a new set of signs to abbreviate under the category of persuasion, says Breitman. He said it's persuasion that becomes the directive type category. But we want to replace primitive signs with a higher notion of the true and uh, create a new set of uh, signs that represent the notion of the true. So that takes us to block five at the top of the page, top left. The prophetic word and the th threshold of discussion lead religion to transition to a living religion with higher notions of the true. And that becomes Christianity, which is constituted with monotheism, agape, self-giving love, and a system of beliefs. The individual emerges out of conversion for the new creation of the self, and mystical illumination becomes a possibility, and the psychology of prayer emerges. And that leads us in Brightman's position, because it is the non-scientific method, but still empirical, he takes up the sciences of psychology and sociology. So we pass through psychology and sociology in block six. Living religion passes through psychology and sociology. The self synthesizes interest in others with the self. The self engages in objective thinking about the real. That's a big emphasis by Brightman. Objective thinking about the real. There's conscious interaction with others in the body of Christ. 
that helps to refine one's stance toward the social situation. The love of truth becomes the guiding principle, and phronesis and praxis begin to emerge for the first time. We're getting ready to transition into the practical. And that means we're going to move over into that objective side over there to block 7. Because we're transitioning from the true to the real. From the true to the objectively real. The self forms a praxis model of the eight core beliefs. The self posits a creative action toward realizing value, objective value. The self perceives reality as conserving value and possessing an objective sense of value of its own. And that takes us to uh, the step that uh, Brightman announces, and that's in block eight. We move we make the transitional moment now from what is to what ought. Phenomenology of religion concludes its speculative side. Religion is ready to transition to the practical or to the ought. The self must address how to obtain value. The weighing of means accompanies one's praxis of intent. And so this is the recap of uh, Brightman's Phenomenology of Religion on the speculative side. But we're going to erase this entire chart and we're going to build another one at the concrete level now because Brightman's going to present a two level, two layered presentation of a phenomenology of religion. We just concluded the speculative from pages 1 to page 93. And uh, so this gives you a, a beautiful recap, but uh, he does transition on page 93, so our next lesson, we're just going to see where um, Brightman takes us, but we will transition into phronesis and praxis, and we're going to see what that means, and what exactly is he going to start asking as those cheap, chief philosophical questions. What are those chief philosophical questions that Brightman's going to approach? We'll have to take that up next time, but this gives us that powerful recap. We got our uh, phenomenological starting point, which is empirical and non-scientific. We negate a uh, priori truth. We negate logical positivism. We negate Bardian approach. We do transition out of national religion into prophetic religion, and that means we get involved in dialogue and critique by prophetic word. Dialogue and prophetic word allow us to elevate religion into the notion of a living religion that does enclose within itself a notion of the true. And that becomes uh, the quest of the self to recreate the self. The creation of the new self is enabled. And we don't ignore psychology, we don't ignore sociology. We move on to passing through both of those sciences because they both offer a kind of a reciprocal relationship with religion. And we do uh, through dialogue with uh, within the body of Christ, we start uh, to emerge with a phronesis of practical wisdom and a uh, the desire to actually posit a praxis of action and reflection. And that took us to a, that need to transition from the true to the objectively real. And for Brightman, that means the realm of positing, just like it meant for Hegel. The objectively real is posited in the realm of positing, okay? It's not entirely subjective. It's not entirely objective. It's that internal externality called the realm of positing. And Brightman has his own right there in block 7 in the top right. That's uh, very similar to Hegel there, but uh, we have to make that transition in order to get to the ought. We move from the is to the ought. We move to a practical obligation and practical wisdom. So just a really, a, I think, a tremendous recap. We really, I really like the approach that Brightman takes. He takes the time to do a, basically, a 93-page pre, 
phenomenology to prepare us for his more in-depth phenomenology that will follow, which takes up those large philosophical issues that are confronted by religion. So just a brief little lesson here, but a, it's just a brief recap. It gives you that snapshot picture of the entire phenomenology of religion on the speculative side. And we pick up next time on page 94.